Hello and welcome to Means and Methods, a video series from the libraries at the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University, where we talk with faculty about the ways that they construct new knowledge. And with me today is Betsy Johnson, who is a professor in our English and Communication Department. Welcome, Betsy. Thank you. Thanks for joining me today. Glad to be here. So we have this romantic image of writers, and you're a writer, who are in a garret <laughs> under uh, and and are struck by lightning of inspiration mm -hmm. and produce works that way. Mm -hmm. But in reality, there's a lot of research that goes on into even creative writing. Can mm -hmm. you tell us about maybe your approach to doing something, a project you're working on? Yeah, so um, one project that I definitely did research on, and it was experiential research, uh, is I got a grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board, and I was able to travel around the state of Minnesota and to visit what uh, um, I was calling sacred sites. And so I got to define these things. And so one was a polka mass up in northwestern Minnesota, which I adored. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also went to a chanting ceremony at a Jewish synagogue. I went to Pipestone. I went to the Jeffers Petroglyphs. And in each of those places, I tried to write about my reaction. And so I brought myself into these new spaces and I was trying to um, use them as a way to really explore the human experience as it searches for the divine. So that so was one example. That was research that was essentially a field experience exactly. of going out to different communities, uh -huh. um, engaging as an observer or a participant? Were you? Mostly I was a participant. Um, sometimes, uh, like I went to visit the great. Oh, the Little Spirit Cedar Tree up on the northern shore um, that's considered sacred by the Ojibwe. And um, so a guide brought me. So there he was more just teaching. and But I still, I got to encounter this tree that is over 500 years old that's on this big rock uh, as the waves of Lake Superior crash against it. So sometimes it was as participant, sometimes observer, but yeah. And so you gathered all these experiences, made notes, took photographs, mm -hmm. and then and then went to your garret? And then I did, <laughs> yeah. And so then I tried to process them. And sometimes it was to capture the details, sometimes to capture my reaction, sometimes to try and capture that larger sacred thing. Um, but just to, to get rid of that romantic notion, um, many of those essays took me five to seven years to get right so that they could get published. Mm -hmm. So it was, I wrote up the notes, I even started the essays almost immediately after, but I had to continue sifting through that experience to try and um, make the words, make the experience matter. And eventually those essays then got published as a book or individual essays in So they've journals? been published as individual essays. I'm still trying to shop around the book mm -hmm. as a whole. So, mm -hmm. yep. And your writing, I know, is really wide-ranging poetry, mm -hmm. essays, mm -hmm. works for young people. Mm -hmm. um, is there a difference in the way you approach research for these different types of writing? Would you re do research to write a poem? Sometimes I, I do end up doing um, research, and I'm trying to think, oh, so my, my daughter is a senior here at St. Ben's, and she's in botany, and she's given me all these great words that just sound great, so then I have to research the words to see what they mean, or sometimes when I'm writing a poem, I'll get stuck, so I'll go to the Oxford English Dictionary and find a word, and then... Um, it has these ways that that word has been used throughout history, and that allows me to then suddenly make great leaps. Um, or with children's books, um, like right now I'm writing a book about the seven um, luck gods in Japanese culture. So I had to figure out what are their names, and there are different lists, so different groups have different lists. So I had to decide, okay, which gods do I want in my story? What do they do? One woman is um, she of the great blackness, and she is a demon catcher. And so now there are demons loose in a basement, and um, the, the main character has to go and collect those demons. What got you started in making the connection between creative work and using um, research as a way to inform that creative work? Um, 
it was a recognition that I am small. <laughs> you know, and, and to for me, writing, it needs to deal with the particular, so, so me, but it also needs to deal with the universal, and sometimes I can't get to the universal without seeing outside perspectives, which I think... I mean, um, and so it's when I realize I'm keeping this too narrow, when I'm, I'm um, getting too small with it, then I need to have that outside world in order to really make the poem or the essay or the kid's book um, expand in a way that surprises me and then hopefully the reader. Um, I, I really appreciate that perspective of being able to... Um, reach outside yourself to make that broader connection. And I don't want to put words in your mouth, oh, but could you um, talk about why it's important for us to use um, creative writing, especially as a way of getting outside of ourselves to connect with the outside world? Yeah, so I believe, I have been told that, that people who read fiction are actually better adjusted human beings. So the more fiction that people read, and I think it's because then they can imagine themselves in other people's shoes. Uh, and we get so caught up in our story and so caught up in what's happening to me that sometimes we forget there is this broader world. Um, and what fiction then, I think, can do, or what nonfiction can do, is say, look at these other people who are in situations similar or completely different. Can you imagine their reality? And then, maybe when I'm talking to someone who's very different than I am, can I imagine, oh, wow, what must your reality have been like? Um, and, and so I think it's a way to train us to listen to other people's stories and to pay attention and not to say, you are other, I'm not going to pay attention to you. Instead, you are a thou, and I can't wait to get to know more about your story so I can understand you better. Can you tell us what you're working on now? Right. Uh, so two things. So one, I'm working on a memoir. Um, recently, in the recent past, uh, I had cancer and went through a divorce. Um, and so writing is one of the ways I try and make meaning out of things that feel like they aren't... Um, where the meaning could be challenging to discover. And so I'm trying to write my way through those experiences in order to, I don't know, come to more understanding and also maybe to reach out to other people. And, and what are they going through? And, and is there a way that, that my message could somehow help them? So that's, that's my more emotionally challenging piece. Uh, and in one of those, I used um, like Susan Sontag's essay on illness. So that was a way I used research too, was to react to some of the things she was writing. Um, and then I'm counterbalancing that with that work on the, the children or the kids book um, with the luck monsters or the luck gods. And so can this main character who might or might not be me, go and get some luck back in her life and gather the luck and bring it back and, and do meet these challenges um, and have everything be okay in the end. So in the past it used to be Night Owl, but now it's an early bird. I got into work this morning um, at 6.45, so an hour before my class I could write. So my goal on the, the Luck Gods book is to write about 300 words a day. And so I'll write about 300 words a day, uh, and then I often send it to my daughter, who is my first reader, to get that positive feedback, you know, and so to keep going. So that's, that's the process with that. With the, the more serious writing, that I tend to, I tend to do at a coffee shop <laughs> because I kind of need, need to know I'm not alone. And, and so even though it's the harder emotional work, I need to be around people um, in order to make it safe for me to enter into some of those harder things. Okay, well that actually was one of my questions about okay. location, so, mm -hmm. and you actually sound like you're kind of nomadic, and that some writing happens in your office, mm -hmm. some writing happens in the coffee shop, some writing happens at home, at home. Mm -hmm. so um, it's a portable uh, assignment for you in mm -hmm. many ways, mm -hmm. and when you're writing, are you on a laptop, on a paper and pencil, and... Right, I use a laptop. Um, mostly because I'm horrified when I go back and look at my hand. I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe it. And so de the delete button is very nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, especially when you're maybe parked in that coffee shop, is it coffee that you're drinking? or is Right. So um, in the morning, definitely coffee fuels good writing. Okay. So thank God for coffee. Yep, because the, the words come. Um, if it's in the afternoon, I have to do tea. Otherwise, I'm awake till like 2 in the morning. So... 
And as you're doing your research and um, reading other people's writing, mm -hmm. do you prefer print books or e-books or totally online? print books? Totally personally, print books. Um, I need I need the object in my hand. I, can, I need to go back and forth because um, otherwise I'm like, no, what, what screen was that on? And so I can generally have a sense of where it is in an actual book. So yeah. And talking about actual books, mm -hmm. is there something you're reading now that you love that you'd like to recommend? Hmm. Or recently? So, yeah, I'm trying to think. So one of the, I'll, I'll, I'll say that one of the things I keep coming back to as I'm writing the, the kids book is Ready Player One. Um, because A, it's about the 80s, so it's a total um, memory hit fest for me. I love that part. But I love the sense of adventure too, but the, the larger things at stake. So the way science fiction can um, critique society, you know, if we all get lost in virtual reality, what happens? Or what happens to our society if we make certain choices? So I love that about science fiction. So that's a book I kind of keep returning to as a way, um, I hope to bring some of those things forward into my book. Thank you, Betsy, for joining us for a conversation today, and thank you for joining us as well. We have other episodes of Means and Methods that you can find on the library website, and we look forward to sharing more stories in the near future. Thanks. Mm -hmm.